So I tried Rapid API and today I'm going to tell you all about it. What is Rapid API? It is a marketplace for APIs and it claims to be the biggest one. So what are APIs and why do we need a marketplace for them? An API is basically a different way of an interface to make your software, your functionality or your data available to others. One way is to build a user interface for human users like me and you. Or another way is to build a technical interface so it can be called by a machine. And that machine might be your user interface. So you might be a consumer for an API. You build software that calls it. Examples for API are your whole login, authentication of users, or maybe you want to process payments, you would typically include the API of a payment provider. Uh, if you need some kind of data in a current way, you might find a data provider that offers an API. So typical cases are services like sending text messages, sending uh, emails, or payment providers or data providers. Fairly recently, I've seen more and more APIs coming up in the artificial intelligence space. So for example, uh, you send over a picture and the API identifies whether there is, let's say a naked body on that picture. And if so, you might not want to show that publicly. Uh, if the API says, no, it's okay, then you can put it on your website. So to, to manage uh, user generated content, to make that more efficient, you don't want to build the whole functionality yourself. You just include it via the call of an API. So some of these APIs are free. Others, they charge a fee that can be a monthly fee or volume based or some combination. Actually, most of them are not free because in the end it costs money to host an API. So why is this idea really awesome? The, you, let's say you're a developer for backends, you know how to build an API, but you're not good in, uh, in building a great user interface or you don't know exactly how your software can be used or your data. Uh, you're not good at selling stuff. So you might just build the API and others who are good at building user interfaces, selling stuff or whatever, uh, can use your API and you don't need to worry about user interface, business support of users, um, selling that stuff to an audience. You can just build your API and that's it. However, you still need to sell your API if you want to make money with it. So you need to sell it to a different audience, to developers. And that can be quite difficult actually. So when you think of the big providers, SendGrid or Twilio or uh, Stripe, these are big companies. And uh, the big challenge here is not so much building the API, but selling it. And that's where the marketplace comes into play. The idea of an API marketplace is really that developers who are good at building APIs just put in their API and worry about nothing else. And on the other side, you have developers looking at the repository of APIs in that marketplace and sign up and buy and use it. And that way everyone can focus on what they do best and it's a much more efficient way of bringing to, together the API providers and the consumers of the API. So that's basically the, the promise of marketplaces for APIs. And that includes Rapid API, which I tried. I've put in a API that I built myself and let's see how that went. First of all, let's have a look at Rapid API itself. So Rapid API has a website, of course they do. And that's where you can look at the whole repository of APIs. And let's have a quick look first and then try to understand the business model from a business point of view, from a technical point of view, what does it have to offer? So we see here on the left, a bunch of categories, colorful categories. No, it's not loading a picture for each, it's just a color. So for example, weather. 
So I would expect, yeah, verified sounds good. Let's just pick some random ones. Dark sky, it's verified, it's fast, sounds good. What does it do? It's the easiest, most advanced weather API on the web. So it has not been updated in a year. It has something in the about page and tutorials, nothing here yet. Discussions, a few comments and the pricing, it's free. These are the most popular APIs on Rapid API. So here we have the big players like SendGrid uh, and that's already, Twilio is a big name, okay. Meme generator, so let's have a look at that one. So it's a tiered model to charge. A little bit of a discussion forum, not much going on in terms of comments. People complain about problems, no tutorial. And ideally we see an example request and an example response. But no, no response. Okay, so not too impressed by this one, even though it's in the list of most popular APIs. Let's have a look at Tilly's. So this one, if I understand the, the description correctly, it would uh, show you, give you the location if you pass on an IP. Uh, let's have a closer look. Latency is very, very low. That would be fantastic. Some spotlights, tutorial, great. Discussion. Okay, not too much going on here. And pricing, they do not have a free tier. It starts with $7 a month. So I'm not gonna try that one. Visual recognition, face detection. Okay, so I assume I send a picture over and I get human faces with optional extra features like age and gender. Okay, sounds cool. So I get boxes with the coordinates, gender, and an age range between 10 and 22. It's quite a wide range, okay. Uh, and the other face would be male. Okay, 23 to 31, more reasonable. Okay, so you get a feeling for the API. So these were a couple of uh, the most popular APIs. Let's find something more niche and see if that's good too. Pinnacle odds, what the heck is this? So the example response is empty, awesome. Getting pre-match live odds, da da da. In theory, interesting, but doesn't seem to be working. Updated nine days ago, so fairly new. In the essence, that means if you really want to try an API that you find here, you would have to spend some time actually trying it out. You can, in most cases, get a free tier, so you can really try, send a couple of requests, see what you can get back, and if it works at all, and then you can decide whether that works for you or not. This is what Rapid API says about their platform. Three million developers, thousands of public APIs, billions of API calls per month. And actually, I think more updated, they claim to have four million developers and actually 40,000 public APIs. So let's have a closer look at how it works from a technical point of view. Let's say you want to use one or multiple APIs in your application. So you would be the API consumer and you use Rapid API. Now behind Rapid API, there's one or multiple API providers whose services you are using in your app. 
the technical calls your application would do would always go to Rapid API, and that would be the one that calls the different API providers and returns a response back to you. That way, all the billing information is done by Rapid API. You get one consolidated bill, and also the API provider does not need to worry about uh, billing and the connection with the individual consumer from a technical point of view. So managing billing and access restrictions or access control, all the accounting, uh, which application uses your API is a service that Rapid API provides. But that also means you ever, as an API provider, you need to take care for your own hosting. So that can be, for example, AWS or anyone else, typically some cloud provider. And it's also up to you to secure your connection to Rapid API. So only Rapid AI in an authorized and built way can access your API. So when you connect your API to Rapid API, let's say you host it on AWS cloud, you need to build up a virtual private cloud so only Rapid API can call your API. And you also need to make sure that you check the key, the API key that Rapid API will provide for your app. Otherwise, someone else could uh, set up a private API on Rapid API and call yours as well, uh, because the VPC typically only checks that um, the connection comes from Rapid API. So what they give you is a list of IP addresses that they use across the globe. And you basically need to set up all your infrastructure in a way that it can only be accessed from this list of IP addresses. And you, on top of that, you need to verify the access key. So this security setup that you need here is somewhat specific. So you do need some more configuration than just setting up your API in, in AWS API Gateway, but you really need to dig into the cloud uh, networking components to have that connection secured. Now, what's a business model from a purely economics point of view? If you're a consumer of an API, let's say you pay $100 for a monthly fee to subscribe to that API, Rapid API will take a 20% share of that to provide all their services from payment, billing, access control, everything, discovery, having that marketplace. And 80% is what they will pass on to you on a monthly basis. So that business model is fairly similar to what we know from the Apple App Store, where you provide your software, not as a service, but you really deploy it. And you also don't need to worry about finding customers for your software, but they manage all of that. So Apple takes a cut of 30%, here they take a cut of 20%. Sounds like a very fair deal to me. Typically the payment alone would be two to 3% at least. Uh, so having the user community, the repository, the marketplace, and handling all your billing uh, functionality, having all that in place, 20% looks like a very fair cut to me. So that's how the marketplace is supposed to be working. Now let's come to a reality check. How is it actually working? So what I have done is I have set up my own API, small one, but still uh, in AWS cloud environment and registered with Rapid API. So basically I'm waiting for customers to come and try out my service. If they like it, maybe even switch to a paid plan. So this is how I configure my API in Rapid API. So I provide a little logo, uh, a short description. In this case, my API helps applications. Let's say you have an application that has a paywall or you want to give a free trial for your articles. Um, they can use like, call it five times for free 
and after that it would be restricted. Or if you have a streaming service, uh, you can allow every account to be used on five devices. But if a user shares his password with all his friends, you would be losing business. So you would enforce a limit to five devices. So you call that service every time a user logs in. The service registers logs that and returns whether the user is within its limit of five devices or not. So I provided a bit of a description, um, documentation, how to call that API. Uh, but I kept it fairly basic as it is a basic one. And I also provide the URL of my service in my cloud environment. Now then I specify the endpoints. So you can log in. So let's say a user logs in on five different devices and the uh, endpoint would return true or false, okay or not, whether it's in the limit or not. And you also need a functionality to remove a user's history just to be data protection compliant. So for each of these endpoints, you provide uh, information, a schema, how to call the endpoint. So an app ID, user ID, all that, number of devices, how it's supposed to be called. Then here you see the proxy key. Here you can show the rapid API API key that they will be sending with every call of your API. And you get some community pages, which is empty. And you can define the payment model. So I provide a free tier, which is very small, just to, to try it out with a couple users, couple hundred users maybe. Uh, but then you, if it works, you need to switch to a paid plan. And what is actually quite nice is a feature to test your API. So you can configure certain patterns on how your endpoints are called and run these, execute these tests. And then you see, okay or not okay. So here I have connected one uh, that tests only the connectivity and you can uh, create multiple test cases. And that's actually quite a nice uh, setup. What I don't like about it is that if you want to configure more than two test cases, you need to pay for it. So you can only have two test cases, run it 2000 times a month. Um, otherwise you have to pay $9 a month. Now the reason I'm not happy with that is uh, making sure there is good quality on your API is not just in your interest. It is massively in the interest of rapid API. They need to make sure. And I think they should also call your API, let's say once a day, just to make sure it's alive and working uh, to keep their marketplace clean and remove all the trash, remove all the APIs that are not working properly. So my experience on the rapid API for my little test case is no one signed up for it. I have no idea how many people even looked at it and decided they don't need that. Now, when I compare that with my experience browsing the API repository, I can very well imagine that people get frustrated easily. You have a library of thousands or 10,000s of APIs. Most of the APIs that I have seen here uh, don't even have a description. I assume they don't work. And based on the discussions, I assume no one uses them. Nevertheless, they have a very high popularity rating and a service level rating. Uh, no, no clue how these are calculated. But from what I see in the API catalog, it maps to my experience as an API provider that simply this marketplace is not ensuring the quality of what's in there. And that's why it's really not working for either side, neither for the API providers, because no one will find your API among tens of thousands of crappy APIs, nor for the API consumer who can try to find the API that he wants, but most likely it's not going to be working anyway. So why bother? 
so sadly, my conclusion to trying Rapid API you now for about one week is I cannot recommend Rapid API neither to an API provider nor to an API consumer. The marketplace does not ensure the quality of the provided APIs, of the listed APIs. It's just showing a huge number of APIs and it's optimizing for the wrong criteria. So a number of APIs is not a good one. You need number of high quality APIs or basically usage of APIs. You need happy customers and not many products, many bad products. And it's not working for if you want to make money with your API. It's not working if you are looking for an API. I did also notice the big API providers are barely here, like Stripe is not on this marketplace. Uh, the, the big ones that you know from the outside of the marketplace world chose not to offer their services on this marketplace. And I do not think it's a 20% cut that they need to pay here. I believe it's simply they don't want to be seen on this one. They could negotiate a better deal than 20% anyway. So that's probably not the reason they're not here. So if you have made any experience with Rapid API, good or bad, be it as an API provider or as an API consumer, I would love to hear about it. Please leave some comments below and let me know how that went for you. Do you work with a different API marketplace that works better or worse? How do you compare them? Please let me know. If you liked this video, if that was any helpful for you and you like different content in a similar style, please subscribe to this channel and leave a comment and a like below.